Blessings, everyone, and welcome to the Wednesday St. Thomas the Apostle Prayer Service. My name is Deacon Patrick Lennon, and I'm grateful that you decided to join us for prayer today. During these challenging times, it's so good to spend time with the Lord and give Jesus and Mary our, our hurts and worries, pains and suffering, and know that they will be transformed into patience strength, hope, joy in the end. So let us again quiet our minds, take two or three nice, deep, relaxing breaths. And because Christ resides quietly in the body, I invite you to bring your attention in and follow the breath in the abdomen, just below the navel. And once again, allowing Jesus to draw us into the Trinity, let us begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Coming together now as family with a contrite heart, let us ask the Lord to reassure us that we are forgiven for those times that we've harmed God's creation and failed to love. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of, the, of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal us and lead us into everlasting life, now and always. Lord, have mercy. So ever loving God, we allow your mercy and forgiveness to renew us, drawing us closer to you and to everlasting joy. And so again, with gratitude, we say, Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, ever living source of all that is good from the beginning of time, you promised humanity salvation through the future coming of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to drink of his truth and expand our hearts with the joy of promises so that we may serve you in faith and in love and know forever the joy of your presence we ask this through christ our lord amen and so once again sit back uh, relax and enjoy the readings november 18th 2020 Wednesday of the 33rd week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of an open door to heaven, and I heard the trumpet-like voice that had spoken to me before, saying, Come up here, and I will show you what must happen afterwards. At once I was caught up in spirit. A throne was there in heaven, and on the throne sat one whose appearance sparkled like jasper and carnelian. Around the throne was a halo as brilliant as an emerald. Surrounding the throne, I saw twenty-four other thrones on which twenty-four elders sat, dressed in white garments and with gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Seven flaming torches burned in front of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. In front of the throne was something that resembled a sea of glass like crystal. In the center and around the throne, there were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. The first creature resembled a lion. The second was like a calf. The third had a face like that of a man and the fourth looked like an eagle in flight. The four living creatures, each of them with six wings, 
were covered with eyes inside and out. Day and night, they do not stop exclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. They throw down their crowns before the throne, exclaiming, Worthy are you, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. Because of your will they came to be and were created. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Mighty God. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his strength. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him for his sovereign majesty. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Mighty God. Praise him with the blast of the trumpet. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said a nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, we do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, sir, your gold coin has earned 10 additional ones. He replied, well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this small matter. Take charge of 10 cities. Then the second came and reported your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant too, he said, you take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief for I was afraid of you because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, with your own words, I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has 10. But they said to him, sir, he has 10 gold coins. He replied, I tell you to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel story about a person fleeing abroad in order to be installed as king of his own country was already known by most of the people in Jesus' time. He was most likely referring uh, to Herod the Great, who had fled for his life from Jerusalem to Rome and won the support of Emperor Augustus. When the emperor named him as king of Israel, 
Herod returned to Jerusalem in triumph. The parable tells how at the king's return, his supporters had to prove their loyalty to him and to answer for their behavior during his absence. The question was, had they been acting prudently while he was away? Had they made profits on his behalf with the money that he had loaned them? The maxim, use it or lose it, can apply uh, to learning a foreign language, but it can also uh, refer to any talent or activity that we pursued. We could paraphrase the parable today as, if you use your talents for the service of others, you will be rewarded. But if anyone for any reason is unwilling to share their talents, they will be the poorer for it. I think there's another way that we could look at this uh, parable as well. Um, have you ever been to a restaurant? Oh, remember those days. <laughs> a restaurant where there were few customers and you assumed that you'd be served quickly, but it took forever. Then at other times when they were very, very busy, the service was great and fast. Sometimes the more that you have to do, the more you get done and even feel less tired. It's about momentum in some ways or getting into the flow of life. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. And if a bicycle stops moving, it falls over. Life and love are always active and moving. There's always a giving and a taking. There's always a flow. And uh, to me, um, the message is clear that if we stay active, the more we do, the more we're able to do, the more we're gonna gain. The less we do, the less we get, and the less we'll ever have. At the end of the parable, where the king's enemies were to be killed in his presence was a description of what Herod actually did to his enemies on his return as king. Jesus may have included this terrible event to emphasize the importance of living our lives to the full, so as to avoid the terrible death, if you will, of an unproductive life. It surely doesn't mean to suggest that God is vengeful. This would be inconsistent with Jesus' descriptions of God throughout his life. Our trust is in a merciful, nurturing, loving God, who we call Abba, Papa, or Daddy. Now, shortly after this parable comes a story about Jesus entering Jerusalem riding on a donkey, while crowds hailed him. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, they said. His almost royal entry into the city led some of his followers to think that the kingdom was coming right away, very soon. The parable today intends to counter any expectation that God's, that God's kingdom was imminent. Instead, there would be a long interval between Jesus's nomination as king, the resurrection, and his return at the end of time. This interval is an opportunity for us to provide loyal service, a time to profitably use the gifts, talents, and resources that God has graced us with. One of the servants who had received a loan did nothing useful with it out of fear, out of losing it. Fear left him indecisive, unable to take action. It is striking how often Jesus says in the scriptures, do not be afraid. He knew how fear can stop us from giving our best. The opposite of faith is not so much unbelief as it is fear. If we acknowledge it and rise above our fears, 
we make it easier for others to do the same. So brothers and sisters, we can help and encourage each other by showing courage ourselves. Oh, faithful God, help us live life to the full as we put our trust in you. Christ remains and works with us to bring truth and healing into the world. United with that purpose, let us offer our petitions to God. For the world, that demons of domination, hatred, and violence be driven out, and all peoples be united in a bond of love and peace, we pray. For the church, that it speak with the authority of the humble, realizing our human understanding of the Son of God will be incomplete until all is revealed in God's time, we pray. For leaders of vision and faith like Pope Francis, who can help the world see that hope is greater than our fears, we pray. For all who fear the challenge of climate change, that they will find the courage to speak out and act boldly to protect and heal our fragile planet, we pray. For the comfort and healing of those seriously affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, and that those not yet affected do their part to minimize its spread, we pray. For those afflicted with other serious illnesses, or long-term infirmity, know the grace coming from God's presence and through those who care for them, we pray. For the fullness of redemption of those who have died recently and for the comfort of those who mourn their loss, we pray. And now for all those other special intentions that you may still hold in the silence of your hearts. we pray. Faithful God, loving healer, you've entrusted us with a share of your work. Here are prayers we bring to you with confidence and hope. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so let us now conclude our prayer service today with the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you.
the Lord is with you. Open your hearts and minds now to receive God's blessing. And so may the God of love and consolation bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Rest now, brothers and sisters, in God's peace and glorify the Lord in everything that you do today. Thanks be to God. Once again, do something good for yourself or and for someone else. Stay safe, be well, and God willing, I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.